Okay? And if we can decongest, clear out the gallbladder very quickly, that folliculitis, it's a form of folliculitis, it will actually heal up very nicely. Uh, usually within 30 days when we treat it correctly. Okay? But again, you've got to look at it, diagnose it correctly and accurately, treat it correctly and accurately, and it usually will clear up. So, let's kind of take a look then at a couple of other things that are unique about patterns. All right? Everybody good to this point? Okay. When we look at the face and the body, remember the body in essence is a map. It is telling us where to look next. And if we look at it correctly, oftentimes we can find what the body is trying to tell us. And so what we found often, and so this, is, this can be kind of an overgeneralization at times, but just often this is what we find in the body. Chin strap acne as if you had on a chin, right, or a, a chin strap for a, hooking on your helmet or keeping your helmet on. Chin strap acne is usually going to be hormonal. Okay? Hormonal acne, if you'll observe, especially for females, will come as a cycle. I almost get that one cleared up, and then before the red mark's even gone, it's there again. And it comes back each month. Okay? So chin strap hormonal acne is also associated with the large intestine and the liver. The liver has a responsibility of inactivating excess of hormones and then they're processed through the large intestine or through the intestine. Okay? So the liver dumps into the intestine. When things are not appropriately eliminated, then they're backed up into the system. We look at this little area across the forehead. So here's my hairline. Okay. So the forehead actually often represents for a stress. Okay. So it's more emotional based, which then correlates to emotional eating, right? So that's where a lot of people say, "Well, I, I don't feel stressed if I eat enough chocolate, or if I drink enough sodas, or <laughs> enough chocolate chip cookies. I don't feel stressed. I feel great." But that's where a lot of times it's confusion as, as to whether or not this is food or something else. It's really a stress response. And remember, in Chinese medicine, those of you who worked with us through NET and some emotional things, you've seen the connection between the forehead and the organ. That is the emotional point. Okay? So that's where we look for it, again, for a Chinese medicine point of view. Now, as we look at the broadness of the nose area, the nasium itself, this has to do with poor breathing, but it also, so you also see oftentimes in this area, poor breathing, but it's secondary off to some type of a dairy sensitivity. For those of you who are dairymen, I used to work on dairies. I built milk cows at BYU Dairy. I love dairy, I love cows, I think they're great. This is just what we found, okay? So just the messenger, not the message, right? <laughs> So oftentimes when you see a broadness of the bridge of the nose and you see or hear swelling or congestion, we found this to be very consistent with dairy, okay, and a dairy intolerance. If you'll actually listen to your child, you know, they're over there trying to eat their cereal in the morning, and they can't even eat because they can't breathe, right? You're laughing. You haven't heard it before, no, I'm sure. No, never. Okay? But that's what we start to observe. And they can't breathe clearly because the sinuses actually start to get blocked and congested. And this area can represent then that type of food intolerance. Okay? So look again then at your child. Part of their changing habit is also a transition from prepubescent or prepubertary into the teen era. And that often then becomes a, a very oily area for them as well, and they don't realize, oh, I actually need to clean more than once a week. So part of that is just hygiene, but we also look then at this type of a sensitivity. Okay? The cheeks, this area, again, may still be associated with this liver because the chin strap in actuality covers into that area. Then remember, we've talked about around 
the mouth itself is truly an onlay of the large intestine itself. Okay, thank you. So as we look at this, we're actually looking at that type of a, an awareness or a link. Okay, everybody okay with that to that point? Now, remember, when we start to get out onto the body, again, the neck and the shoulders, the back, have to do also with hormonal acne, but I think we see more consistently a deeper infection. A lot of the deeper infections that we see, unfortunately, come secondary to prolonged <coughs> antibiotic therapy. Okay? So when we see young people who've had, oh, I had this little blemish, and I had all oh, this little blemish, oh, and this little blemish, again, just the message, not the messenger. Okay? What we have observed consistently, though, is when a young person initially had a few blemishes, and now they've been on six months, a year, two years of this minocycline, tetracycline low dose, is we're actually creating a superbug that is starting to then spread and affect other areas. And we'll start to see it spread to the chest and the shoulders. Okay? And that's when we have to be a little more aggressive. And that's the interesting thing, too. Again, as a teen, I had this type of acne, and I realized as I look back how grateful I was for Accutane, but the side effects I won't even go into, they're bad. But I, I would not say I wish I'd never gone on Accutane, because at the time it really helped my self-esteem. All right, But there is something you're going to pay if you end up going on some of these medications. Same thing with the antibiotic. Remember, when antibiotics were introduced, the biggest concern was a specific organism called Clostridium difficile. How many of you have ever been given an antibiotic and told of the risk of Clostridium difficile? Does anybody even know what that is? Exactly. Do you know my dental friends who have practiced now for more than 20 years Back in the 70s and 80s, when they were graduating from dental school, they were told, be so cautious to give amoxicillin. It's such a strong antibiotic. It has a high predilection for causing a concomitant infection in the GI system called Clostridium difficile. This is a bacteria that's an opportunistic. The antibiotic, when you take it orally, it kills all the good flora in your GI system. And what ends up coming in? Clostridium difficile that actually creates a pseudomembrane or a pseudomembranous lining inside the gut and inhibits normal absorption and digestion. So that was their big concern. Oh no, be careful. Only select a few cases to give amoxicillin. Who hasn't been on amoxicillin now? Right? We don't even talk about it and we don't even talk about this. When we see cases of Clostridium difficile, we'll actually get patients that will come in and they have this recurrent bouts of alternating constipation, diarrhea, or when I was a teen I was treated with minocycline or tetracycline, and I can't figure out why I have these crazy bowels and why I'm getting more food sensitivities, and why my body, my GI system, my, this area always hurts. I feel bloated, I feel constipated, I feel like I've got diarrhea, now I feel constipated. All these alternating symptoms, oftentimes we'll find clostridium difficile, okay? And it's very easy to treat. We use a, a, another infection, in essence, to block it out. It's called Saccharomyces boulardii. I'll just tell you about it because it is so easy to treat, all right? And then use your probiotics and your prebiotics afterwards. But that is something that we really need to look at consistently. And, John, remind me. That's something we need to talk about. I haven't talked to you about that. I'm sorry. All right? Okay. But that's something we need to talk about. So as we look at this, we need to go through these types of presentations and infections and look for what may have led up to, and now what are we actually dealing with when this starts to spread into the cystic acne? Most likely we're dealing with a superbug. Okay? These guys that are so resistant that they are pushing out and pushing through the whole system and now we've got to say okay bigger gun or another infection that's allowing that to be a concomitant infection right I think one of the best things for me as a, a young person when I had acne was that my dad 
just got on this idea that he should start to eat more healthily. And fortunately for me at 15, I just joined him. It was like, that's a great idea, Dad. And, uh, and I think I was able to do some things by using Accutane, but also some other things as a young person to realize, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, this is what's happening. Oh, this is what's happening. Okay? So you've got to be responsible also for your own body. If you drink milk and you can't breathe, hmm, let's have another glass, right? <laughs> I just didn't get enough. If you drink milk and you can't breathe, then you make a milkshake and then you make yourself some ice cream before you go to bed at night and you can't breathe any better the next morning, I'd say don't have another glass, but you'll have to decide, right? Sometimes those are hard decisions to make, especially as a young person. But if you can start to recognize what's happening, maybe we can make a change, right? Now, one of our biggest concerns then, especially for our young people as they start to come into their adolescent years is how can my body's responding like this and what can I do? And if we can start to give them some answers, I believe most young people are responsible enough to say, yeah, I think I can do this, okay? I know some of my best friends right now that we're working with through these types of situations are very, very diligent in their and health conscious in what they consume and how their bodies are responding. Those are some keys that we find, okay?